All right, I got one for you. Because this has been a fucking topic and a half. And, you know, Israel, the incident that happened there kind of shows kind of like factual evidence of like, would this kit work? Okay. Putting a red dot on a pistol. A lot of people say, of course, red dot, 100%. I agree. People go, no, iron sights. I could do iron sights. And I agree. But let's take a look at worst case scenario. Okay. For concealed carry, iron sights, tritium sights, at the end of the day, I could pull and, you know, put rounds in a man sized target, you know, standing three feet away from me, which is more no, normally where it happens. Um, most people on earth could do that. Just because at the end of the day, <clears throat> you're mostly doing a point and shoot type thing or you're shooting off your front post sight. Not that difficult. You know, worrying about getting the motherfucker off of you in order to obviously, that's a different story. So you go like, if most engagements are that close, why well, need a red dot? I agree. But here's the deal. You see that nonsense that happened with Hamas? And I believe America is going to go through something like it, but not that. Because it's not going to be as organized as that. It's going to be a little bit crazier. I'll get into that in a different video probably tomorrow. But at that time, when everything crazy happened and all you have is your pistol because your rifle is probably stored away or someplace, whatever. You know how it goes, okay? Chances are you're wearing your pistol now or you have it on your desk but your rifle is a little bit away. What happens when you gotta engage targets in your doorway, in your living room, in your driveway? What if you have to obviously place certain shots next to certain people? You wanna have that clarity and that distance because things change, three feet, 10 feet, yada, yada, there's still a threat. Um, red dots work better. I could do all those shots with my, you know, my iron sights with the tritium. I got, I got fiber optic. I agree. Here's where it gets interesting. Let's say you've been fighting for five or six days. Let's say three weeks. Let's say you haven't been drinking your coffee. You're not sleeping properly. You got that ring. Everybody knows that ring that just doesn't leave you um, in your ears. And you could, you, could, you could taste the gunpowder in the back of your throat. Like you're filthy, you're tired, you're exhausted, you twisted your ankle, you haven't eaten properly, and whatever you eat, it's just like not really entering your system. You're like working on adrenaline. Yeah, and just think about it. And now you gotta play shots. Your iron sights. Do you know what happens to your vision after a while, lack of sleep or sleep deprivation? Low blood sugar, stress. What have you been injured? What if at the end of the day, your eyes are tired from all the smoke and shit that blowing back in your face? Let's face it, if you got a can on, top, on your rifle, that smoke has been in your face. So, would it be easier for you to turn around and just place the dot on the body and do what you have to do? I think so. So, my vote goes to the right dot. Now, some people go, what if the battery goes down? Ah, we're not in that generation anymore. You're really not gonna have that. You got Hollow Sun that even has a solar panel on top, so you're not going to get a battery down. But let's just say the battery goes down and you don't have spare batteries, which, whatever, costs like a quarter. You can have like 20 spare batteries. You can face the apocalypse after Jesus comes back and leaves. But anyway, let's just think about that. You can still put that glass inside that red dot without the red dot and frame a human body and you can still get shots on target. Just trying to say, at the end of the day, it's the way to go. And it helps in racking, let's face it. It helps in racking. But I think at the end of the day, based on the reality of what we're seeing in Israel, where people are still in the fight. See what I just said? Not that it got into a gunfight. They're still in the fight. That's what you have to think. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Don't look at your kit for one-time engagement. Imagine having to still be in the fight. Most of you, when you go to the range to shoot, you probably stop by Starbucks in the morning or you get yourself, you know, your, your favorite coffee from, you know, whatever, your 7-Eleven, whatever. 
you're caffeinated, you're fed, you're slept, you're, you're feeling good, and you go to the range, and even if you work hard on the range, could you imagine several days of feeling like shit, injured, stressed, your wife and kids crying, you probably, God forbid, lost a family member, but you still gotta stay in the fight. Why not use something that gives you an advantage? Because if you're fighting, all you, all you want to have is an advantage. There's no such thing as a fair fight. You want to have that advantage. So putting a red dot on your pistol is something that I am 100% for. I saw a video of uh, Israeli troops, a bulldozer, try to ram a, a checkpoint. These guys have been on the checkpoint already for like a bunch of hours. They're exhausted. You can see it. You, get, you know that drain that like, you know, you're like half asleep, you wake up and it's just like game time. <laughs> Here it goes. Guess what was on top of the pistol as it was emptying rounds inside that little cabin with the driver? It was a red dot. All he had to do was put the dot on him. That's what stopped the track, the, the, the bulldozer. We have to get on with the times. You have a... You have a red dot or a low, you know, a low variable power scope on top of your your your, your rifle. You Got to move with the times. You have to have it. The advantage it gives you is, is is I mean, think about it. It gives you an advantage to kill your enemy. What could be wrong with that?